Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Welcome back to our new flyer series. And in today's installment, I want to take a few minutes and talk about the hobby itself. Because in other clips, I've covered a lot of the technical aspects of flying a quad. Things like knowing your gear, knowing the rules, understanding your limits as a pilot. And those are all super important concepts to master if you want to become a better pilot. But those are technical things. There's an entire social aspect to the hobby as well that I'd like to discuss today. So I can promise you, <laughs> the first time you put your quad up in any kind of public setting, whether it be a beach or a park or around other people in general, you're going to immediately become the most interesting person in that area. Because people are going to see the quad go up, they're going to look at it and go, somebody's flying that. The next thing they're going to do is start scanning the periphery, looking for the person with their thumbs on the joystick. And that's going to be you. And some of those people are going to be really curious about that technology and they're going to approach you. And it typically goes one of two ways. You'll either have people that are fascinated by it, and they'll come up to you and say, what are you flying? Who makes it? How much is it? Where can I buy one? Let me see what the screen looks like. And that's a great conversation to have. Some of my favorite moments are when those conversations take place, because I feel like I can help educate them, explain what the technology is about, get them started with something small, talk about all the quads that are out there, and it's a great hobby conversation to have. But every now and then, the other end of that pendulum swing will be somebody who's having a bad day. They're just cranky in general, they're just having a bad day. We all have them. And they've decided they're going to come yell at you about that thing flying in the air. And a lot of times, most times, they're misguided. And they've got impressions about what you can and can't do and all the rest of that. You have to be ready for that conversation as well. And you can't be happy with these guys and angry with this guy. You've got to, you've got to balance those two out because, like it or not, you're a pioneer. And you should be proud of that because technology like this, I've said it before, should not exist. This technology, this flying robot, this Mavic 2 flying robot that can fly four and a half miles away from me, has the ability to fix its position in 3D space based on GPS satellites, can do crash avoidance and obstacle avoidance when it's flying. If it detects a problem, it can immediately take control, fly home and land within two inches of where it took off. I can stream 4K video. I can take beautiful pictures. Stop me when you've had enough. This shouldn't be something consumers own. This should be technology in the hands of NASA. But thank goodness it's out in the consumer space and we're flying it. But it's disruptive technology. The public is not ready for this. And I can, again, promise you that as new an experience as it is for you to put a quad up, people seeing that quad for the first time are going to be blown away by it and they're going to react. Maybe they've had friends that have heard horror stories about quads impacting planes, which is all nonsense up to this point. But they've got opinions. And the cranky ones and angry ones are going to want to argue with you and you have to be ready for that. The others that haven't formed an opinion are going to have a lot of questions. So you, you again, have to be prepared for those conversations and they can be wonderful. And I, I'll be honest with you, all the years I've been flying, all the conversations I've had, I've been able to turn every single person around politely to a good opinion of quads. And to turn people around is really important because as an ambassador, and that's what you are, you're a pioneer and an ambassador. You've got to be ready to have those conversations because that moment of conversation, when they show up in front of you and have that question and you push them off or you don't answer it correctly, they're going to leave and that story is going to resonate between all their friends. They're going to go back and say, hey, we're at the beach over the weekend and this guy or this jerk was flying this quad and here's what I found out. You know, And sometimes those bad stories, if they didn't get a good impression, you are going to ripple in a bad way for us. And all that affects public opinion because... Believe me when I tell you, they know people that get to make the rules at that beach. Eventually, they're going to get to somebody who's on the council or somebody on the police, and they're going to start these draconian rules about, oh my gosh, they're dangerous because Frank said he saw them flying on the beach. So you got to be ready for it. So for me, I love having the easy conversations because we all know what we fly, and I, I'm one of those guys that if I go to a dinner party, I can be totally obnoxious because the minute somebody asks me about tech, I'm going to spend 45 minutes explaining the virtues of what quads can do today and how you need to own one and get on Amazon tonight and order it. But but don't be that guy. But but you're probably in a good position to explain the basis of what goes on here, how safe they are, make sure you emphasize that, how easy they are to control, how bulletproof they are if a failure occurs, how you can't really film somebody from 200 feet in a bikini on a beach. It's not an invasion of privacy thing. Have all that stuff ready and start figuring that talk track out in your head because I promise you it's going to happen and you need to be ready for it when it does. Now, you could certainly avoid public places. You could find a field somewhere and fly there, or in the middle of Arizona desert, you could fly there and not have to deal with the public. But honestly, it's kind of a catch-22, because most of the places I want to fly are public places. They're beautiful beaches or forests, or maybe I'm in a park someplace at some kind of historic location, and, and I'm going to be around the public. But I, I revel in that. I actually look forward to those conversations, because I want them to understand 
how amazing our hobby is and how beautiful it is to take views from the sky and film those or take pictures of those and how I can explore areas that as an older guy I'm not going to hike 12 miles into the woods you know so I get close enough I can put it up and see everything that's out there to me again I talk about this an awful lot it is an epiphany every time I put this thing up and, and I'm grinning like an idiot ear to ear. The minute this thing lifts off, I'm like a kid in a candy store, man, flying that quad. And I'm sure you're the same, but what I'm getting at, and I'm probably belaboring the point, is be ready for those conversations. So some things that can help prepare you is, again, all the stuff I've talked about before. Make sure that where you're flying is a place that you're allowed to fly. Make sure you're flying within the rules. You're not flying over people. And if you're in a state like New Jersey, like we're lucky enough that they passed legislation last year in New Jersey that rescinds all the local bans. So up until that point, beaches had bands and parks had bands. Everybody could put their own ban in based on where they were. The governor put a law through that rescinded all those bans. Print that out. Maybe print out the rules from the FAA site and carry those with you in a little folder so you've got them with you in case somebody starts questioning you. If you have to, not the good guy, but the jerk guy, you can whip that out and say, look, I've done my homework. I'm an experienced pilot. I've got 60 flights under my belt. I understand this quad better than the people that built it. So, Take it easy, and here are the rules, and here's here's the permission for me to fly. Here's what the federal government, the FAA, said is good for me to do when I'm flying. I'm following all those rules. If that doesn't work, I know people are going to be sort of questioning this, but I like to show people what's going on with the quad. So if, they're, if I'm flying the quad and I've got somebody who's really curious, I'll spin the controller around. I'll say, look, here's what you can see from the sky. Their jaws drop when they see that, and they're like, we got to get home and order one of these things. I can't wait to get one myself. Even the guy who's cranky, if I can show them that, look, I can't see, I can't even tell if you're wearing pants from 200 feet in the air, so I'm not filming you, I promise you. It is safe. Look how much control I have over it. Matter of fact, stand back 10 feet, put a quarter on the mat, and I'll land it on that quarter. That's how much control I have over this quad. And if you can turn those people around gently, not, not every time is it going to work. And, you know, if it's somebody official like a park ranger or something and they've got authority over the area, even if they're misguided, I've said this before in clips, talk to them for five or ten minutes, try to educate them. But in your mind, be thinking about wasting any more time trying to turn them around that day at that moment is taking away from your ability to fly somewhere else. So maybe give it five or ten minutes. If it isn't going in a positive direction, just be polite and say, you know what, we just have a difference of opinion. There's no point in us, you know, going on around about this tree a couple more times. I'll come back and we'll talk later and maybe I'll come back and talk to your supervisor and we can figure it out. I want to fly here, but if you think I shouldn't, we'll figure out what, what really should happen. But, but again, at the end of the day, be ready for those conversations. Another thing I do is I'll print out a business card with an address on it, like an email address where they can send me an email if they want to. Now I've got a business obviously, but I've got a personal email as well that I use for these kind of flights. So if I'm flying at a beach and I have a family that is really, really interested in it, my, my attitude is going to be like, well, well, you guys all get together and I'll take a nice picture from 100 feet up and show you how good these pictures are. And if you send me an email, I'll send you a copy of that picture right away. They're excited about it. Now, they've gone from curiosity, maybe a little bit of scared kind of thing, to really interested in the technology and can't wait for that email. And sometimes I don't even get home from the location and my phone dings. I got an email from that family asking me for the picture from the beach. So, again, you have to be ready for that. You have to be excited about that. And unfortunately, being a pioneer, you've got to put up with that stuff. And I think back to the days when in the United States, we expanded West and some of those pioneers got in those, I wouldn't have the guts for this, but they got in those covered wagons and they said, you know what? There's some mountains over there and we're not sure what's on the other side. We're going that direction. And then they left and they didn't come back. And I'm sure the people that stayed back were wondering like, Maybe there's bears over those mountains and they ate everybody that went over there. They had no idea that on the other side of those mountains was the western part of the United States with all the beauty of the, you know, the Yosemite Park and the Grand Canyon and the southern coast on California. So the people that left didn't want to come back because it was better over there. And that's where we're at. So as a pioneer, it's risky because you got to put up with this kind of nonsense for the next year or two until everybody understands these things are not dangerous. But you have to take that position. And I would encourage you as a fellow flyer, you're going to do us all a solid favor by being ready for that conversation. Be polite, be firm, and be educated. Make sure you have all the teachers you need to explain to those people exactly why you're flying where you're flying, and that you're permitted to fly there, and even show them what's going on in the quad. And that'll dis dispense with a lot of the conversations where they get aggressive. So anyway, that's the two cents I wanted to add it today, because as good as you get flying this thing, if you're not ready for the social side of it, it can turn you off to the hobby. I've had friends that have gone flying for the first time at a beach, had one of those aggressive conversations, and then afterwards said to me, Rick, I'm done flying. I'm not, I'm not going to go back out there. I don't want to get into a fight every time I fly. But then I'll take them back out and fly with them a couple of times. And when those conversations happen, they'll watch me walk through them and dis disperse with a lot of the angry people and sort of walk through those conversations. And they feel a little bit more comfortable 
having that conversation on their own. So anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about today. Just be ready for the social side of it. Um, if you have any questions about anything I've covered today, if you've got suggestions on how you handle these situations, please drop them in the comments below. I have a bunch more clips I'm going to be releasing in this particular series, so pay attention to the channel. And if you want to subscribe, that would help you because that way you'll get a little ding every time we post a clip and you won't miss any. Um, but I love flying and I love sharing my experiences flying and I hope this is helping you guys because uh, it's a wonderful hobby. And every time I put a quad up, again, I'm just in heaven flying that quad. And I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way about it. So thanks an awful fly for watching. We'll see you next time. Happy flying. Thank you.